one of my old people, one of my old people, the head for the next clean room video. Let's get to it. So, welcome everyone, and this week's five minute video is going to be about particles. And it's looking at particles from the perspective of physics rather than biology. So, let's get to the presentation. Okay, this week's video is all about particles, and we're looking at particles in clean rooms. And this is less to do with biology and more to do with physics. Now, some of these particles might be carrying microorganisms or they might present themselves as product impurities that we don't want to see in our products anyway because liquid parentals need to be free of visible particles as well but we're more worried about what happens to particles where do they go and so on so particles are of the main part three-dimensional objects and this means that the three dimensionals are of the same order of magnitude. But beyond this, they come in different shapes and different sizes. And they're rarely spherical, apart from the particles we actually use to test particle counters, because these need to be of a uniform design. And strictly speaking, particles are different from fibers. Fibers are two-dimensional whereas particles are three-dimensional. And fibers, fibers are also longer than they are wider and are relatively flat. We also have like a third concept as well which is about the agglomeration of particles. Well that's about particles coming together. So this could be like skin cells for example and sometimes these are called uh, platelets and this happens due to effect in physics we're interested called van der Waals forces but we don't worry any more about that what is important is about the scale as well because this helps us to put things into context so we use the micron scale so you hear about micron size particles so one micron is equivalent to zero point zero zero one millimeters so to give you an idea of scale if you take a typical needle the eye of the needle is around one millimeters the threshold of human vision that's how small we can actually see if we've got good eyesight is 50 microns if we were to shake around talcum powder we go to the second picture and we're able to like make out the granules which we can't do with the naked eye but these would be about 10 microns in size. Red blood cells are about six microns in diameter whereas bacteria are one micron or even smaller. So you get a sense of scale going from left to right there. Um, now then what do particles actually do in the air? Well particles of less than 10 microns are called aerosols. Hence, the name for the particle counter is the aerosol particle counter. And the word aerosol derives from the fact that this kind of matter is floating in the air in a suspension. So this could be a solid, it could be a liquid, or it could be in the air, and these are all classed as fluids. So either the particles repel each other, or they come together. Now they're coming together of particles, someone once told me a good analogy of that is something called the coat hanger syndrome. So it's like if you have a number of coat hangers in your wardrobe or closet and you go in to take one out, more often than not you actually end up taking two or three out because they've all kind of locked together, particularly with the hook heads and things. So that's an idea of, of how particles kind of like to come together and start to form these agglomerates. Now whether particles settle or not depends on their density and that also affects how fast they might settle. And in physics density is the mass to air ratio. So the larger the density then the larger the mass and the faster the particles will settle onto a surface. So 5 micron particles will set up, settle at a faster rate 
the 0.5 micron particles. So where do all these particles come from? Well, we've covered people in various videos before. We know we shed an awful lot. But we can also have particles from friction. So friction is two surfaces rubbing together. And we have the opposite effect of the pushing force creating friction in that direction. So this could be a conveyor belt, or it could be a sliding tray. Or it can actually be the act of us walking because there's friction between the skin and the clean room suit. And friction tends to produce the larger size particles. So that's particles above 5 microns in diameter. So we know that from when trays are slided. So for example, if you're loading a UDAF cart or even if we're like manually loading a freeze dryer, we get that elevation of 5 micron particles. But we can also get particles from heat, and these are smaller particles, and this could come from equipment not working properly in the first place. So it could be something being generated from the equipment. Now, an excuse to have a Star Wars picture on the screen, but we can also get particles from electrostatic forces. Now, particles heading for surfaces is bad. We prefer the particles to remain in the air and then for them to be extracted through the extract vents via the act of air changes. But some particles will head to surfaces due to electrostatic charge, hence the Palpatine picture. And this happens when the surface is a different charge to the particle. And this can happen with bacteria when they're floating on rafts of skin matter because these tend to be negatively charged, whereas a lot of clean room surfaces are positively charged. Another big concern is with high humidity. This increases the surface area of the particles through what they call in physics capillary forces. So what this kind of means is that when we get kind of like concave particles, these tend to flatten out. And then the wider the surface, this creates a bigger area for adhesion. And if you remember what I said earlier, the bigger the particle, the more likely it is to settle onto a surface. And also, as we've learned from previous videos, humidity is connected to sweat. And the salt molecules in sweat also cause particles to attach to surfaces in the clean room. And this happens through acts of chemical bonding. But there are things we can do to minimise this um, particle risk. Um, and this is achieved through best way practices. So aside from HEPA filters, we can, and fast air change rates and good turbulent flow and good clean up recovery times, we can do things for better design. So we can minimise friction, so we can make conveyor belts run better and we can control better by slow deliberate movements the acts of trays rubbing on each other and we can also try and eliminate the people factor by introducing automation and eventually robotics and this also connects with getting people out of grade A and also having suitable equipment that doesn't push out heat and also keeping humidity on the lower end so we're designing clean rooms ideally to have humidity at 60% relative humidity and below. Okay, so this brings this video to an end. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'm Tim Sandal, and I'll be back with you with another video very soon. So good luck with the rest of your day, and um, cheerio.